This video is brought to you by JLC PCB. In today's episode, you will learn how to make a soil moisture monitoring system for plants using NRF24L01 transceiver modules, a pair of Arduino boards, one channel relay module, a switch, SSD1306 or LED display module, DS18B20 waterproof temperature sensor, and the soil moisture sensor. If you don't have this particular type of the soil moisture sensor, no worries at all, you can use any other type of the soil moisture sensor. You are not bound to use only the resistive type soil moisture sensors, you can also use the capacitive type soil moisture sensors. The reason I'm using this soil moisture sensor is because the sensor props are long, waterproofed and are made of highly corrosion resistant material to ensure a long lifetime up to 6 months after being plugged into the soil. Due to its long sensor props, it digs deeper into the soil. Ever since I got long range LoRa transceiver modules, since then I didn't use the NRF24L01 transceiver modules. There were times when I was using NRF24L01 radio modules in all of my wireless projects. I will add links to all the related videos in the description. The soil moisture monitoring system which I am going to make in this video can be built using the long range LoRa transceiver modules and can also be built using the NRF24L01 transceiver modules. If the distance between the transmitter and receiver is over 800 meters, then go for LoRa transceiver modules. And if the distance is between 100 meters and 800 meters, then you can use the PA plus LNA versions of the NRF24L01. And if the distance is less than 100 meters, then you can use these low cost NRF24L01 modules. Since in my house the maximum distance between the transmitter and receiver can be up to 40 meters so that's why I selected these low cost short range NRF24L01 transceiver modules. This is the transmitter side along which a soil moisture sensor, NRF24L01 transceiver module, a one channel relay module, DS18B20 temperature sensor and a 220 volt AC light bulb are connected. I'm using a bulb instead of a water pump so that at the time of carrying out a practical demonstration you can clearly see for yourself how I turn this bulb on or off. You can also use a 220 volt AC water pump and you can also use a DC water pump. It all depends on your choice. If you have to control a large water pump then you better use a power relay. I have made a separate video on IoT power relay in which I have practically demonstrated how to control a large water pump. The DS18B20 temperature sensor is optional. If you don't want to measure the temperature then there is no need to connect the temperature sensor. The reason I'm using it is to explain that we can send multiple sensor values. And this is the receiver side. It has been connected with a button, an OLED display module and NRF24L01 transceiver module. Now I am going to explain its working a bit and then we will kick off our practical demonstration. The transmitter will send values related to the soil moisture, temperature and motor status which will show on the OLED display module fitted on the receiver side. The button on the receiver side is used to control the water pump. When the control signal is sent, the transmitter side turns on or turns off the motor and at the same time the transmitter also sends a feedback message whether the motor is turned on or not. So it's a two-way communication system. Now let's go ahead and start our practical demonstration. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Feel free to visit their website jlcpcb.com slash scale to not only find out what awesome PCB and assembly services they offer but also to easily upload your Gerber files. It automatically detects the number of layers and dimensions. Select the number of PCBs you want to order. Select your favorite PCB color. The price is automatically updated as you select different features. Finally, you can click on the Save to Cart button. You will only need to pay $2 for 1 to 4 layers PCBs and $0 for your PCB assembly. Besides this, JLC PCB also offers industrial 3D printing services starting at only $1. You can start by clicking on the first link in the description.
I have powered up the transmitter as well as the receiver side. You can see soil moisture, temperature and motor status on the OLED display module. Now if I press the button, the light will turn on which will indicate that the motor has turned on and at the same time I also receive a feedback that the motor has powered on. You can see the motor status has changed from 0 to 1 on the display. Now I am going to add some water and you will see an increase in the soil moisture value. Let's say this soil moisture value is enough. So now I can press the button and turn off the water pump wirelessly. It is so simple, isn't it? All we need is to read the soil moisture value on the display and then accordingly control the water pump on the remote side. It can also be used as a wireless soil moisture meter. This way you can move around and measure the soil moisture of different plants while the supervisor in the control room keeps an eye on the soil moisture value. I'm sure by now you might have got an idea of how does this system work. So without any further delay, let's get started. You can purchase these components from Amazon and Sun Founder. From Sun Founder, you can purchase a pack of 5 NRF24L01 modules for only $8.99 with free shipping throughout the world. The company's purchase links are given in the description. This is the transmitter circuit diagram. The VCC and ground pins of the NRF24L01 are connected with the 3.3 volt and ground pins of the Arduino. Don't forget to add a 10 microfarad capacitor between the VCC and ground pins of the NRF24L01 module. The CE, SCN, SCK, MOSI and MISO pins of the NRF24L01 module are connected with the Arduino pins 9, 10, 13, 11 and 12 respectively. The VCC and ground pins of the DS18B20 are also connected with the 3.3V and ground pins of the Arduino. While the data pin is connected with D2 pin of the Arduino, there is also a 330 ohm resistor connected between the data wire and VCC. The analog output pin of the soil moisture interface board is connected with the A0 pin of the Arduino while the VCC and ground pins of the interface circuit are connected with the 5 volt and ground pins of the Arduino. The one channel relay module is controlled using the Arduino pin D3. I'm using a separate 12 volt power supply for the DC water pump. The ground wire is directly connected with the ground wire of the DC water pump while the 12 volt wire is connected with the water pump through the relay. So by turning on and turning off this relay, we can turn on and turn off the water pump. Now let's take a look at the receiver side circuit diagram. The NRF24L01 connection with the Arduino remains exactly the same. A switch is connected to pin D2. The SSD1306 or LED display module SDA and SCL or SCK pins are connected with the A4 and A5 pins while the VDD or VCC and ground pins are connected with the Arduino's 3.3 volt and ground pins. These are the NRF24L01 development boards which I just received from the JLC PCB. I'll be using these boards for testing my NRF24L01 transceiver based projects. On the left and right side you can add different types of sensors and displays. I'm really impressed with the PCB's quality. The silk screen is quite clear and the white color solder mask looks pretty amazing. This is how the PCB boards look after soldering. You can use any of these boards as the transmitter or receiver as the NRF connections on both the development boards are exactly the same. Next, I connected everything as per the circuit diagrams and now let's take a look at the programming. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you download the NRF24 and NRF24 network libraries, the last temperature, Adafruit GFX and Adafruit SSD1306 libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. 
This is the transmitter side programming and this is the receiver side programming. I have already explained these codes in my previous projects. The only difference is that this time I'm using different sensors while everything else remains exactly the same. So if you are using NRF24L01 transceiver modules for the first time, then I highly recommend you should watch my previous videos. Anyway, I have already uploaded the codes and now let's watch the Arduino and NRF24L01 based soil moisture monitoring system in action. I have powered up the transmitter as well as the receiver side. You can see soil moisture, temperature and motor status on the OLED display module. Now if I press the button, the light will turn on, which will indicate that the motor has turned on and at the same time, I also receive a feedback that the motor has powered on. You can see the motor status has changed from 0 to 1 on the display. Now I am going to add some water and you will see an increase in the soil moisture value. In my upcoming tutorial, I will make the same project using long range LoRa SX1278 transceiver modules. Consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching. Let's say this soil moisture value is enough. So now I can press the button and turn off the water pump wirelessly. It is so simple, isn't it? All we need is to read the soil moisture value on the display and then accordingly control the water pump on the remote side. It can also be used as a wireless soil moisture meter. This way you can move around and measure the soil moisture of different plants while the supervisor in the control room keeps an eye on the soil moisture value.